Hi everybody, this is Brandon Bowden, your Logan County Extension Educator, bringing you some timely topics. Well, right now everybody sees all the spring weeds uh, growing up in their yard, all the hen bit and things like that. And uh, one of the biggest questions I usually get is about sandbird control. Uh, so that's what we're gonna cover today, uh, real quick here. And, um, and if you have any questions that, uh, that I don't cover today, uh, then uh, you can always send me an email, or give me a call. Of course, this being the first video um, and uh, uh, the, the, the time that we're in right now, um, our office is closed to the public. So, um, so you will have to call and leave a voicemail and I'll call you back when I'm in the office uh, or send me an email and you'll have my email address um, at the end of the presentation. So. Uh, if you have questions, don't hesitate to, to get in touch with me and I will get back to you as soon as possible. So now let's go ahead and um, get into the presentation here about controlling sandbirds. So we've got uh, Right here is the culprit. So we see uh, uh, some of the ways that you can identify. Of course, we all know the, the burrs um, or the spikelets, we call inflorescence. Um, and then um, the collar um, right down here, the ligule uh, is another way to, to tell what, uh, what type of, of uh, uh, grass it is. They're uh, kind of specific. Uh, between the different grasses. And uh, <clears throat> uh, there's some other ways that we'll talk about here uh, as we go through. So what is it? Um, it's an annual warm season weed um, and uh, reseeds itself through those uh, burrs. Um, so the seeds start to germinate uh, beginning when the soil temperatures reach 52 degrees and peaks at 75 degrees. So how do you know what your soil temperature is? Well, you can go out and stick a thermometer in the ground um, and know exactly what your soil temperature is uh, right then and there. Um, or you can use a tool like the Mesonet. Um, and um, that is a really good tool that I'm gonna show you right now. And so if, you, if you're not familiar with this, you should be. Um, it's there we have an app for Google or uh, for Android and, and Apple devices, uh, as well as the website here, which is a little more robust um, and uh, has quite a few more tools on it. So uh, mesonet.org uh, is, is how you get there. And you can select the city that you're closest to. Right now we have it at Guthrie. Our ambient temperature is 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up to the tab that says weather on it. I'm gonna click that and it's gonna bring up um, a lot of information here. We're gonna scroll down on the left side and we're going to select soil temperature. And that's gonna bring up a bunch of maps. And we're gonna scroll down to the bottom where it says three day average temperature. Uh, there are several options here, two inches, four inches, four inch bare soil, 10 and 24. Um, we're gonna use the average two inch soil temperature. Um, because that's typically where those, uh, the burrs or the seeds are. And uh, so you can see that right now, uh, our three day average soil temperature at two inches is 55 degrees. So if we uh, go back to our presentation, starts, uh, we see that uh, they begin germinating at, two degrees so so it's uh we've gone a little past when they begin uh but i think we're still okay um the uh cooler uh cooler nights have been helping us out a little bit so it peaks at 75 degrees so in the heat of the summer um so our control options <clears throat> we have a couple and they all need to be used in conjunction with one another uh if you apply a pre-emergent and you don't follow up with a post-emergent, 
and you don't uh, uh, fertilize your existing turf, then it's really not going to work very well. Just like um, if you use a post-emergent, um, trying to get a, a control of sandburrs, um, it's really not going to work very well either because you are only going to spot spray that, that post-emergent herbicide and um, uh, you're really not going to get um, very far. It's going to be very frustrating. And if you don't fertilize, then you're not going to give your existing turf the nutrient it needs to help uh, strangle out the weeds. So um, that's going to be frustrating as well. So this is a program. It needs to be viewed as a program and uh, adhered to as a, a seasonal uh, lawn care program. So pre-emergent is exactly what it sounds like. It is applied before the plant emerges. Uh, so this comes, uh, this little graph right here, um, or table comes from our uh, um, E832 uh, manual that basically has all of our um, herbicides in it uh, for everything and it gets updated every year. So, um, so this is a really good resource. So we can see here that we've got pre-emergent, we've got a lot of chemistry names up here at the top, and then we have our annual grasses, bluegrass, crabgrass, goosegrass, sandburrs. So here's our sandburrs right here along the bottom, and we can see that there's fair, good, fair, good, good, fair, uh, not an excellent, it's not, uh, that's not really on the market. So um, we're going to take a look at the label here for this uh, Benfin plus Orzolan. Uh, so please remember that anytime you contact the extension office or talk to me, I'm going to recommend a chemistry. We do not recommend um, trade name products. Um, it's like, saying, um, uh, I recommend you eat salt, not eat Morton salt. Um, so I recommend you, um, you use a cell phone, not uh, go get your iPhone or your Apple device. So uh, just remember, um, I can point you in the right direction, but we don't recommend um, make specific recommendations for trade names. So <clears throat> keeping that in mind, I'm going to show you a label. So this is a label. This XL2G is the uh, product name. Uh, this is what the manufacturer calls it and what it's sold as. So you're going to see a lot of different trade names whenever I tell you to go look for the active ingredient Benefin and orzolan. So this is what we're really concerned with right here. So those are the active ingredients. As you scroll down through this pre-emergent label, um, which you can find on the internet, or it will always be adhered to the back of or accompanying uh, the, the herbicide. So we move to the next part of it, and we're, we need to make sure that this uh, chemical actually controls what we're spraying, uh, what we're trying to control. So weeds controlled, annual grasses. Um, so right down here we have sandbur, field sandbur. That's what we're looking for. So we know it is labeled for what we need it to do. And then we move on down to application rates, frequency, and timing. Um, so when you're looking at this, um, or before you get to this point, please don't ask me, how do I mix it and apply it? Um, that is for the label to say. That's not for me to say. I would basically read this to you. Um, and uh, and you, can, you can read it just as well as I can. So um, if you have questions about what it means, I can help you decipher that. Uh, but basically, the label that accompanies a herbicide is an EPA label. 
and it is federal law. So uh, the label is the law. So you need to um, adhere to it, don't do any more or any less. So to get uh, control of warm season uh, uh, grass weeds in warm season turf grasses, we are going to, we can apply this product in pounds per thousand square feet at 2.3 or 3.4 pounds per thousand square feet. And that, uh, that affects the frequency in which we can apply it because we have a maximum amount of herbicide that we can actually apply per acre or per, per thousand square feet if you break it down. So a lower rate means that you're gonna be able to apply it more often, a higher rate, less often. And uh, when that comes, why that comes into uh, uh, consideration is um, all the other types of weeds that this chemistry and control is a pre-emergent. Um, so, so you have a couple options there, but if you know that you're gonna have to spray it or you wanna use this particular chemistry um, again to control another weed, then you might wanna do it at the 2.3 pounds per thousand square feet. And it's in pounds because this is a, a dry wettable powder. So, uh, so if you need help with that, I can certainly help you with that. Post-emergent is, uh, again, what it sounds like. It is after emergence. So this is once you see the plant. And this is um, usually when people start realizing that they have a problem um, or whenever they walk across their um, their yard and get sandbars in their pant legs or shoes or in their bare feet. Uh, so uh, you really need to have most of your control done before this occurs. Uh, what you can do after that is spot spray um, or try to kill the individual plant. And that's um, very time consuming and it's not gonna yield you as much result as using a pre-emergent. So you can see here that we have some really excellent um, options for uh, uh, post-emergence. Um, we have uh, one I'm gonna uh, look at here is this uh, imazequin, and we're going to look at the label for that. So on here, uh, the trade name, the specimen, name is image and again we're looking at uh, mazoquin as the active gradient so we're going to do the same thing on this that we did on the other label and we're going to scroll down to where it says what it controls and we're got we've got weeds controlled so those broadly so we don't need those yet so grasses field sandbur so it controls field sandbur um, so, uh, what we can, what we look at next is how to mix and apply it. And that is here in this nice little handy table. Uh, so you have a spray mixture volume gallons. So three gallons total volume. We have how much herbicide to, uh, uh mix in that three gallons in ounces. So half an ounce in three gallons. Um, will um, allow you to yield an approximately one and a half gallons of spray mixture will treat 1,000 square feet. Uh, so you know that uh, if you have 2,000 square feet, you're going to have to um, do the, use the entire three gallon mixture that you've made. Uh, so half an ounce will do 1,000 square feet. So that's how, that's how that works. And some labels are really long, some labels are really short, uh, but they all have pertinent information that you need to know on how to mix, apply, and use this correctly and stay within the law. So we're uh, moving back along uh, here. So that's post-emergence, it would pre-emergent, not post-emergence. Um,
we looked at that. Now fertilization, uh, this is completely dependent on your soil test results. I recommend that you come into the office and pick up a, um, uh, some soil test bags um, and then bring that back into the office and we can send it off for analysis and then I will help you identify which types of fertilizer and how much you need to apply um, on the, throughout the growing season. So the reason fertilization is important is because uh, your plants or your turf grass actively grows throughout the season and um, a lot of the weeds are actually going to be um, plants that require a lower amount of nutrition and they would typically not do well if they had, uh, if they were in an environment that had a higher amount of soil nutrition. Uh, so what we're really trying to do is um, promote the growth of the uh, desirable turf grasses that you have in place so that they can help strangle out uh, eat the, uh, the, the weeds, either the grassy type weeds or the bottom weeds. So fertilization is a very important part of that programmatic approach uh, to your turf grass management. Uh, so here's the uh, links uh, to, uh, to, thing, to documents that I've used. Uh, you can find these, uh, uh, these are fact sheets um, throughout our, uh, uh, that we have on our website. It's actually pods.dasnar at okstate.edu. Um, so you can click on those or copy and paste, uh, however, or you can send me an email and I'll, I'll email them to you in PDFs. So that's it, that's it uh, for uh, Sandberg Control. Um, again, my office number is on there. Uh, my email is on there. Don't hesitate to give me a call. I'll call you back uh, next time I get in the office. And, uh, and then I will uh, return emails on a regular basis. So, um, so again, thanks so much. Uh, appreciate it, and hope that you enjoyed this uh, little bit of information. And uh, again, don't hesitate to give your extension office a call if you have uh, questions about urban horticulture, uh, turf grass management, trees, and things like that. So, got a lot of lot of topics um, at our disposal to talk about, and. Um, I'm going to be doing that uh, quite a bit here as we go through it because the office is closed and I can't come out and do site visits. So uh, look for this and uh, you know share it, like it. I'll have it on our YouTube page. I'll have it on our Facebook. Uh, so um, um, and if you have a particular topic that you want me to discuss, uh, email me and let me know. Um, and I will, uh, I'll do my best to address that um, and, uh, and help answer your, your questions that are important to you. So uh, once again, Brandon Bowden, Logan County Extension educator um, with our uh, uh, timely topics. Hope it helps.